What's up, everyone? It's been a while since I've done an installment of this series, but uh, as a lot of people know, my favorite Star Wars character is Big Starklighter, and I love talking to people about why they love the side and background characters that they do. And uh, today is just a really good day to talk about Bosk uh, with Roman and Matthew, two of the creative minds behind Scorekeeper, uh, the new Star Wars fan film a Predator Star Wars matchup centered around Bosk, which uh, I, I thought was so much fun as a, obviously a fan of Star Wars, but a fan of Predator as well. Uh, so we're going to talk about that film, but I, I really do want to talk about kind of the genesis, how you got to that point. What made you want to do a fan film about Bosk? Why do you love Bosk so much? Sure. Well, uh, Bosk, for one, is my favorite bounty hunter. He's been my favorite since I was a child, and I saw him on screen. Um, main reason being, I have an older cousin, so he already <laughs> staked claims to Boba Fett. So I was like, okay, fine. Well, my favorite color is yellow, and I like lizards. So Bosk is definitely mine. So uh, growing up, you know, I'd always play with my cousins, and they'd all have their characters, but I always had Bosk. I made I made sure, like, that Christmas, my dad got me Bosk, the little six-inch figure, and uh, I used to play with him all the time. But... um. When the book started coming out and I was getting a little older, I started really deep diving into the lore of him. And I actually found it really fascinating. Just the whole idea of, um, you know, strength till death type mentality. Um, and I really uh, found it interesting with the whole concept of the scorekeeper, which is their goddess or God that they worship. Um, that's always up for grabs. It's either a God or a goddess. I've always been a fan of goddess. Um, but, uh, yeah, what, what I love about him is just, uh, ironically, he's he's very much like a predator. Um, they have similar religion styles. They they worship the hunt. Um, so as most people know, Trandoshans hate Wookiees. Um, and the main reason being is they are actually the two, they're one of the only two species that can like hand-to-hand -hand combat each other. Um, Trandoshans are really, really strong. So I always found that pretty cool. Um, just seeing, you know, in the movies and all how people were like, don't mess with Chewie, he'll rip you apart, where Bosk is one of the few that can actually go toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Um, and uh, I also found it pretty interesting, because I've always been into the dark side of things. Um, I found it really fascinating that, you know, Bosk is gruesome. I mean, he has a room in his ship that is dedicated to skinning Wookiees. And, like, he's got, like, a meat locker. Um, I mean, his name literally means um, devourer of prey. So it's it's pretty cool, um, knowing the lore of him. Um but yeah, the, the thing that I found pretty intriguing is, um, I'm getting real deep here, is uh, Jagannath Point, <laughs> which is what, so so Trandoshans, the whole reason for the scorekeeper is they collect these things called Jagannath Points, which is points upon killing something. Um, and that's what they tally. And the scorekeeper tallies until they die. When they die, they enter you know, the new realm with the scorekeeper. And the scorekeeper pretty much delegates how strong they are according to their, their point value. Um, Bosk, of course, right? you know, according to his, his people, he's one of the, the strongest and most well-known, um, which I found pretty cool. Um, so they don't, they, you know, they don't really touch on that at all. Um, honestly, I think it's now legends because that was more in the, the novel side of things. And when Disney came in and stepped in, they kind of changed a lot, which, you know, it's kind of a bummer, but I like it because it leaves room to expand these characters kind of from a fresh start, you know, um, which led, Matt and I to kind of talk about the whole relationship of Bosk and Boba Fett, because that's something we've always found pretty cool. Um, you know, Bosk being Fett's mentor. I mean, Bosk literally found Fett and groomed him. Um, and the thing I love most in Clone Wars, which is now canon, is how Bosk still respects him, even though he's a little kid. He still protects him, which I find pretty cool because Bosk sees how strong he is and he recognizes it. Um, a lot of people think that they hate each other. I don't think so. I think it's more of a competitive rivalry where if they're in a situation um, and they know one is particularly good at doing something, they'll recruit them. Like Fett knows, like he's got to deal with some wookies. Let me get, let me get Bosk in here. Cause Bosk can handle it where Bosk is, you know, I need, I need to figure out a way out of the situation. Fett might know the answer. And then they, they kind of convene with each other. That's always been the way I've seen it in the lore. Um, but yeah, well, I, do, I do want to let you know real quick. The, the scorekeeper is Canon. Uh, they have brought a lot of that stuff back. Um, <laughs> Cool. It, it, does, it does sound like when they're uh, keeping species, they're not changing much about their 
uh, history or their lore. So the, oh, the scorekeeper great. has been specifically mentioned in the uh, newer Bounty Hunters comics. So oh, that's good because I know yeah. I know he's in. I know that he talks about the scorekeeper a lot in Battlefront, which is great. Um, so. Um, and speaking of Battlefront, that's another reason I love Boss because he has a lot of like gadgets like that kill other species, but it fuels him, which I've always found awesome. Um, you know, regrowing limbs. I mean, it's, it's pretty much like the Deadpool of Star Wars. You know, he's you can't kill him. He's really hard to kill. Um, it's a good point. Like, yeah, yeah, which I I've always found really really cool, and I just love the look of him. Um, now, in terms of loving the look, I love the look of him in comics. Um, I was never a fan of him on screen. I always thought he looked a little too. Eh, so I actually made it my mission to work with um, the special effects makeup artist Bill Johnson and Eric Garcia, who are two very well-known uh, makeup artists in the television and film world, to create this boss that you see, um, which we wanted to make much more uh, aggressive. Um, and we actually took a lot of um, interest do you, from... Do you mind if I throw a still up real quick? Yeah, go for it. Yeah, because it's yeah. kind of like a big reveal in the film itself, but uh, like it, it looks good. That yeah. was my my jaw dropped. Uh, my wife just went whoa when, <laughs> nice. awesome. when uh, he first shows up. So, well done. Thank you. That was that was honestly like the hardest thing was creating uh, a photorealistic boss that not only moved like practically, but was also scary. Because uh, that's the thing I've always like didn't really like about Boss because he wasn't very scary, and he's a scary character. Like. If you cross his path, he will just straight up kill you. That's what he does. You know, it's not about like the money. He's in it for the kill. Like he wants that because of the scorekeeper. That's what he's about. So yeah, we uh, we we put a lot of thought and effort into creating this character in order to not only um, not worry about it much in post, but more you know giving giving a giving character to the creature where you know you actually can interact with it more, especially for the actors, which helped a lot. Like uh, Courtney Chen played Afro was actually scared. She didn't want to see the character until it was on screen. Like till we called rolling, I actually had umbrellas in front of me and then we mm -hmm. pulled the umbrellas and then she was just like, Oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, but um, yeah, let's get, I mean, I guess we'll talk about uh, more about Fett and Boba uh, or Boba and Bosk mm -hmm. because Matt, Matt is the Boba fan fanatic here. As, yeah. you can tell. as you can it's see, a, it's, it is a, it's a very good time to be a Boba fan. But yeah, so as a kid, I, I latched on to Fett. Um, and the first film I saw was Return of the Jedi. Uh, my mom had caught it on um, TV when it aired on TV. So I didn't even see it in the theater, unfortunately, um, until special edition. But uh, so my mom recorded it late. You know, C-3PO and R2 is walking into Jabba's palace. I never saw the beginning. I only saw Fett, you know, and all that falls in the pit. And I'm like, there's a giant hole there. It's got a jetpack, so <laughs> I, I was always believed. I always believed that, and then, uh, then they added a beak. They ain't gonna stop him, <laughs> and it didn't. Uh, the fans and legends kept him alive, and now Disney's brought him back, and uh, so yeah, it's a, uh, it's pretty awesome. So, um, but I fell in love with the look uh, because he's basically a, I mean, he's a bounty hunter, so he's a Western bounty hunter in armor with this medieval helmet this crusader helm and he's got a jetpack. It's like, it can't, you know, I know boss is pretty cool, but can you get any cooler than, than, you know, well, <laughs> all his speak, gadgets and stuff. Speak, speaking of the origin, the thing I find really fascinating too with boss is that the flight suit obviously appears in the, the cantina in episode four, before you even see boss, it's actually, there's a human wearing the suit and it's uh, I forget the character's name, but he's introducing Obi-Wan to Chewie and Han. And then they walk over and sit down in the booth. Mm -hmm. uh, but what's what I find ironic is I, I feel like when they did this scene now, I don't know if this is true or not, but I feel like the you know, the director's like, all right, I need some bounty hunter looking types. And, you know, they were focusing on Boba Fett and they're like, yeah, well, we got this flight suit and uh, we've got this old mask. Why don't we just throw all this on him and make him a character? And then I just that's what I love most about like Star Wars. Uh, you can get yeah. these little like I just mean, yep. toss this together and boom now it's on a t-shirt it's it's huge it's mad like that's <laughs> and, and as fans we we latch on to that stuff and yeah something that the film creators were probably yeah just like we need some bounty hunters and mm -hmm. put this lizard man in that suit yeah. that i think was also from doctor who yeah like, it was yeah uh, and now now yeah. he's a fan favorite character and all yeah. he did was snarl in one scene so we got yeah, yeah. <laughs> we got these pipes uh from the cantina drink can we make a droid out of that? Exactly. Yeah. Now it's IG-11. Like, 
I yeah, actually, yeah. I, I think that it's a cosmetic. That's well, yeah. that actual flight suit is something that they they would wear. I think it was back in the fifties. Um, so that was actually really fun creating that that flight suit. That was tough because um, yeah. uh, I I commissioned uh, Lone Star. Um, Lone Star, he's in Denmark and he actually, he custom makes the suits and he sent it to me and then I had to modify it a little bit just to, to work with these, these particular pieces because he's used to doing it for mannequins. So it's actually really fun. That was, that was, that was like my favorite part about this whole thing was creating this costume. Cause I'm normally a cosplayer. Um, so like Matt was saying, this is kind of how it originated is we're both cosplayers yeah. and Matt finished his fet. And then I was like, well, if you're doing fet, I'm doing boss. So. And we we're yeah. like, all right, yeah. We're both filmmakers, and it's like, well, if if you do that costume, we have to do a film. Yeah, and um, it's, it's kind of funny how that started. So he was he was up here last year helping me with a a, a Christmas special I was doing on a, a YouTube Christmas special thing. Uh, yeah, we I guess we can get into that too, but uh, <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. But uh, so he was up helping me, and then um, we were playing Battlefront before driving to. Uh, you know, the, the set and everything um, or the day before, let's say. And then uh, so uh, he's playing Bosk and uh, activates the heat vision and all that. And I'm like, dude, Bosk is the predator. If you do that before. costume, if you do that costume, all we need are rebels, which we can get like woods, which are everywhere everywhere can, can i say how much i appreciate the line of like why is it always got to be woods uh, like, that's such a that's just just a star wars fan film thing uh, like, you know it's i'm so glad you noticed that i'm because glad you noticed. actually we yeah. were on set alex and i actually yep. we, we improvised that i yelled to tom so williams good. who played dak and like matt told me he's like we got to do something about woods i was yep. like just just say this as you're walking off so i'm really glad you caught that because i was an improv yeah, on the day it wasn't was on the day <laughs> it, it's such a good meta like specifically star wars fan film mm -hmm. thing Where, yeah. Cause, yeah. i mean yeah because we love fan films man it's like i mean i've i've been in a lot of them and uh so it's just funny to 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 be a part of that and then bring them into that joke as well you know? yeah yeah it's all as a, a out of, all out of love so Oh yeah, for sure. But uh, but so, yeah, so, so that's, that's how kind of spawned to the whole predator vibe. Yeah, which, yeah, yeah. Well, which I think really makes the fan film. I I was having so much fun. Oh, good. Throughout the whole thing of like, just at the start, I was like, it's been a while since I've seen Predator, but <laughs> I think this is how it opens. And Go back. Like, it is. Yeah. The hound yeah. shoots, shoots out that ship. I was like, this is how Predator this opens. This is it. Yeah. And even so. the credits with like down to uh, I know Freddie Boyd who plays Xander. Yes. And like him reading a Dr. Afro comic and Hawkins is reading a, a comic in the Predator yep. uh, credit. It. It's all it's all so good. It was Thank there. You. Yeah, yeah we, we, we definitely took extra effort to really match a lot of those moments um, because uh, like Matt was saying, I you mean, know, we grew up with these movies. So we love them. Like that's, yeah. Predator still like, you know, just a fun just oh, it's ever, if, filled movie. It's like crazy. If, if it's ever on, I will just stop what I'm doing and watch it. Yeah. Like, and quote it. I like, will yeah. quote it just for fun. All so no time. judgment here. Where where would you rank it with Star Wars? Do you like Predator more? I Ooh. I like it just under Star Wars personally. Yeah. Um, <laughs> now because it, the thing about Star Wars is there's so many pieces mm -hmm. where Predator, like Predator, is locked in number one. Predator two, I I enjoy it. I still like yeah. it very much because I like how they had the concrete jungle and it was pretty gruesome. But then you start really kind of like yeah, yeah. drop it down. <laughs> yeah. but. I, oh, I though I I deep dove with Predator. Like I read all the comics. You know, mm -hmm. I, I know the whole story arc with that, and you know, the the story of their clans and how they grew up. So when Matt finally said like Bosk is the Predator, I made the connection of the Scorekeeper and like the Predator religion, and I'm like, oh my god, this. Is I mean, he really perfect. is. Yeah, <laughs> I'm surprised it hasn't been done. We were like, how is this not a thing yet? Yeah, you know? but the thing uh, that I enjoyed most with this project was um, just how it started, and then it just kept growing and growing mm -hmm. and i was at a point where uh, you know due to due to this year in the pandemic i was like you know what i'm going all in you know i'm putting all my cards in because i i work in tv and film normally so i was not working um since march i'm an assistant director uh for the dga and um directors guild of america and i uh i, I normally work on the show doom patrol and we mm -hmm. we shut down at the end of march so i uh pretty much just focused all hands on deck with matthew on 
creating Scorekeeper. And it started with the woods and then we locked in a location, um, which is Netherworld Haunted House in Atlanta, Georgia. Um, we locked in that and it kind of started expanding. And I'm like, yeah. you know what? Let's just go for it. So I started calling yeah. all my union friends. Um, we got a lot of uh, professional camera people, you know, special effects. Like I pretty much got the second unit of Doom Patrol to come <laughs> in and help us make this film. So it was actually really awesome. Um, yeah. it, 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 it kind of expanded more than I thought. And it, as it kept going and going, I was like, you know what? I just, I want this to look as good as it can get. So yeah, it was, it was, it was, it was a blessing this year for sure. Was there any uh, connection that you found between predator and boss or Trandoshans that you really got excited about that you didn't expect, which by the way, at the start, you dropped so much lore. Usually I start these kinds of videos with like a little breakdown of, who Bosk is. I wasn't going to do that because I'm like, I think people know who Bosk is, but then you still <laughs> don't a bunch of like great yeah, yeah, it's, lore in there. So that's, yeah. that's perfect. Some things um, I didn't know. It was like, oh, honestly, <laughs> one, one thing actually while we were shooting um, that I, I kind of realized and I was like, you know, this is something that's just like the predator. The thing that I love most about the predator and Bosk that I realized on the day was Bosk wouldn't just hunt on the ground. He would use the trees. So we have moments, I don't, I don't know if you noticed, you know, towards the end of the short, the laser blasts are not coming from ground level. They're actually coming from up mm -hmm. high. So we started realizing like, oh yeah, boss would hunt from the trees like he does. Like it, and uh, we have some heat vision moments where they're at, you know, different perspectives. Um, so that that I started realizing like, wow, these guys are very similar <laughs> in, in their type and, you know, they're, they're strong. Um, they, they, they're heavy. So we, you know, we added, uh, you know, heavy footfalls to him when he walked. So... I'd say that was like the coolest part was discovering more about the connection between the two species, which also led to us thinking of a lot more ideas. That, I mean, we have, we have several ideas in, in mind mm -hmm. for creating more. So. Especially with that ending just to uh -huh. that out. So. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. but, uh, but yeah, we basically uh, use the, the weapons he has in battlefront with the, um, not to spoil anything. If anybody hasn't used it or watched it, but, uh, the, the gas, he used the gas and then, uh, the mines and stuff like that. So we took those weapons that he uses in battlefront and the heat vision and made like a battlefront boss, basically. Yeah. Um, just to, we, we used all his gadgets just to, you know, give a little nod. Mm -hmm. So that was, uh, that was definitely, that, I, that was actually the most fun with the whole project was all the little yeah. Easter eggs, like just thinking of all the little things that, yeah, you know, cause I, cause I, I wanted to use the, uh, the stun net. Uh, if anybody plays uh, Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes, Boss yeah. has like this uh, stun net he shoots out. And also Predator and uh, Predator 2 has the same type of net, but this one would be like electric. But we were like, yeah, let's save that for later or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you were even going into like mobile games for research into boss. Did you did you oh, read yeah, well, the, the Trandoshan arc of the Clone Wars? Where where were you researching for Bosk's stuff? Definitely, yeah. I was yeah. watching a lot of Clone Wars. Um, I was playing a lot of Battlefront just so I could get the nuances down. Mm -hmm. um, being right, research, yeah, yeah. yeah being yeah. the yeah, well, being, <laughs> being the character, you know, being the person that's going to play this this character. I really wanted to do it right. So um, right. Matt, Matt and I spent hours just like sharing the voice with each other trying to figure out how to enhance it more um yeah. and then you know on the day when you're shooting you got like you know 65 people looking at you so you start to get a little nervous uh yeah. that you know that comes with practice though experience um but i think overall he shaped up to be pretty nice i, I really love how the jaw is practical so every time i spoke you would actually see the mouth move and then we did a little more enhancement in post with the eyes because uh, you know, if you ever watch a movie, the eyes are huge for the character. Yeah. So, you know, it, it brings it to life. It, it really does. does. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So D do you have a favorite Easter egg? Uh, I, well, uh, my family, my family loves that. There's a little bounty puck moment. My family loves that. Cause oh, yeah. I didn't tell, I didn't tell anyone about that. That's actually me at the end. So I, I did yeah. translate the Arabesh and I was like, ah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So that, that was a fun, that was pretty fun. But I'd say in terms of, um, the, the, my favorite Easter egg is the very last thing that you see on screen mm -hmm. from, from the scene, the last scene, um, that, that like Matt and I were giddy about that up until Dude, the day we got it. So such an iconic scene in predator 
Yeah. And, and we got to put it in like a, a, a you know, Star Wars fan universe. So it's, I, I have, you know, fet fanatic friends um, that have already gifted, like made a gift, <laughs> gift out of oh, it. Yeah. And it's like, oh yeah, have fun with that, guys. It's, like it's I so, said, that I, I think that just really sells the fan film and that it's just, you're having so much fun making it. Yeah, uh, that I I was just smiling through the whole thing, and oh, like, that's good. That was our goal. Thing. Yeah, <laughs> like I in my mind, the second that Dak shows up with his minigun, I was like, oh, they're gonna do the forest thing, and then yeah, you do the forest. <laughs> like you have to. It's just which, a- by the way, was yeah. so much fun to shoot because uh, so when we shot that, um, by we I don't know if you know much about TV and film, but we had two cameras running on the day, um, and we we averaged about forty five setups a day, which is very fast. Yeah. Yeah. Um, me being an AD, an assistant director, I'm used to just constantly like moving the crew and also sitting in the director position that helped a lot because, you know, we'd have moments where, so the forest scene, it didn't work out how we wanted it to on the day. And we, it's basically, it was like 20 minutes to reset everything. So we tried it twice. And after the second time still was kind of like, eh. so I was like, you know what, we're going to move on and we'll just come back and do little insert shots, just like predator. So we went back to the same location. Thank goodness it was a private residence and, you know, being here in Georgia, they're, they're very friendly to uh, the NRA. So I came back to the location with actual firearms and we set up a firing line and we were, just, we were blowing up trees. Like that was, that was the day we had Tannerite and, and firearms and cameras on really long lenses. And we just went to town. And I think that really helped bring the scene, the, the literally the, the punch that it needed mm-hmm. to, to give you that, you know, dynamic. And then obviously we threw in some visual effects in there. Um, and I think, I think overall that worked out. Cause I was, I was very nervous about that scene when we were shooting it because, you know, if yeah. you don't get that scene, right. Yeah. It's, <laughs> it's kind of disappointing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, it could be bad. Yeah. So what, what was it like to bring uh, Afra in? How, how would, how did that discussion go? That was, I, that, was yeah, that, was, that was another thing. That was another thing where when they pulled yeah. Afra out, I was like, oh, it's the girl from Predator that like they find yeah. it's not their yeah. target, but it's <laughs> yeah. So, so I was Matt's so the I, mastermind for the whole script there. So Matt actually created all the plot points. So Matt, if you want to explain. Yeah, I was like, uh, well, we need a we need a female Anna, you know, from Predator. And uh I had I had been reading the Afra comics and I was like, holy crap. I was like, if if we can pull this off holy crap you know what i mean like it's gonna be good um and then um so i knew courtney she had um she's a stunt performer in atlanta and um you know we we had her read and everything and brought her in and i was like i think it could work like let's let's just let's see what happens and then uh you'll see what happens so Right, right yeah it was um yeah it was really it was really cool to to i mean i guess she's the first live action afro or depiction of uh, Afro live action so far. I mean, in a fan film, so it's not it's not canon, I guess. Right, right, right. <laughs> but uh, but I, it was it was cool to bring her um, into live action that that way because um, I had a lot of friends going, "Holy crap!" Like when they saw her g- the goggles, they were like, "Oh my god, it's Afro!" Yeah. So she's Afro has a lot of fans, like a lot of fans. Um, so y- you have to do it right. And that was exciting. It was yeah. Risky. I think I think you did, and more than that, it was kind of a, a wrench, especially to people who know who Afra was. I was like, mm-hmm. "Oh, this is bad." We're like, "Girl <laughs> Predator," and you don't yeah. really know what to expect. Yeah, like, yeah. This, yeah. This she good. she she gets to the choppa right, and then comes <laughs> back, you know, to save Arnold. But uh, yeah. So that was a little twist. Yeah, if you know Afra, she has worked with Bosk and so, Fat. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, she to crosses his path. Yeah, so I'm trying to remember the the, the comics. Um, she she's yeah, worked yeah, with so. a handful of bounty hunters. So <laughs> oh, yeah. it, it, it didn't feel out of uh, touch. Yeah. yeah, for for her and to be she, with Bosk. Yeah, she always has her own little side plans that backfire, but then she ends up, you know, f- being lucky basically and surviving. That's basically it. So, and in this one, she almost gets gassed, you know, and then which uh, forgot to drop my favorite line from Battlefront after with that moment oh yeah the scent pleases me yeah, yeah. yeah. so but uh but yeah, was... <laughs> what was that it's my favorite thing bosco is yells in battlefront 
Oh, whenever yeah. <laughs> you know, whenever Bo uh, Boba sees him, he's like still using Dioxys. The scent pleases me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I think that's yeah, that's where we got it. So yeah, yeah. heavy battlefront inspired. Um, Definitely, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Which is actually really funny because uh, Tom Williams, when we originally asked him to to take on that role of Dac, the the gunner. It, Tom was actually an avid Battlefront player. So when I mentioned him, I'm like, oh, yeah, you're going to be like Jesse Ventura from Predator. And he's like, oh, cool. So I'm a heavy. And I was like, excuse me. He's like, yeah, yeah, I got yeah. this. I'm good. I'm like, yeah. wow. OK. Like, hey. So <laughs> he, he knew he knew like venting and everything. I was like, all right, you're going to vent your gun now. And he's like, oh, cool. I know exactly what to do. <laughs> so <Perfect. Yeah. laughs> yeah. it was nice. It was fun. Yeah, that was. Uh, he, he's been waiting his whole life to do that. You know, basically, <laughs> he's. Uh, yeah. But, yeah, which is exciting. well. Uh, you mentioned maybe showing off the the Bosque prosthetic a little bit. Are you, you up to do sure. that? Yeah, yeah, I can put it on. I have to step away for a quick second because um, I got to put a balaclava on under it. But <laughs> sure, I'll be right back. <laughs> I think that'd be awesome to show that off. Yeah, give me one second. So you're you're part of uh, Beatdown Boogie too, right? Yes, sir. Yeah. I've, so that's I've loved your stuff for a long time. Oh, thank you. Yeah. So that's where I I come from. My background um, is a lot of independent uh, film work where Roman's more in the, the professional side, but he, we met each other at a uh, dragon con through his wife. And I know, I th think I've seen one of your videos where you spoke about dragon con, but you've never been. Oh no, we, we were in Atlanta too. So, oh, okay. So you've been, we, we okay. go every year except for this year, of course, but oh yeah. Yeah. yeah we always, we always uh, see the beat down crew. Walking oh, okay. Well, yeah, we love your dragon con videos. Oh, thank you. <laughs> so yeah, that's, that's us running around like fools and editing and are, are filming people and then edit those videos. But, uh, so I, that all started basically cause we did a, um, a little, little, um, uh, action comedy buddy cop series called modern warrior solid where I play solid snake and, uh, Brian Lee, uh, who actually played B Lee, which is a bad pun, um, from me, uh, in, in, in the scorekeepers, uh, uh film yeah. <laughs> this is roman so yeah actually uh so he plays ghost and it's a buddy cop series and then so that did well with be down boogie and then went on from there with uh mario warfare which, <laughs> which did, did, did a whole lot better <laughs> and then uh there we go <laughs> <laughs> i like the headphones on <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah it's awesome so the, me... the cool thing about this which uh this is all foam latex down here. So as my mouth moves, I mean, you got to exaggerate a little on the day, uh -huh. but when the mouth moves <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> with each word, and then this is all latex up top with built in eyes. I'm actually looking through the eye holes right now. So that's so cool. Yeah. yeah. So, so here's Bosk. <laughs> this is Bosk. <laughs> <sighs> I love uh, I love the shirt too. The, oh yeah, yeah. Really <laughs> makes the look. What was that? Uh, <laughs> Bosk in my greatness, wasn't that? Uh, I think Brian said that. Yes, <laughs> Bosk in my greatness. <laughs> yeah, it's so good. Yeah. <laughs> have Have you worn that to Dragon Con before? Uh, no, actually, this is we, the first year. Of yeah. it. So sadly, I couldn't yep. do it. We Next actually year. had a big plan this year, doing celebration and then Dragon Con, mm -hmm. and debut um, debut these costumes yeah. at at those, and then uh, so COVID happened, and then um, so we were like, well, let's do a film, and so the weekend of celebration, we filmed. Yeah, that was our our little Star Wars celebration. Had some five hundred first troopers come out, and everybody's, you know, you got stormtroopers on set, like people were like. Uh -huh. Oh my god, they're like little kids running around. It's great. <laughs> That's I, I think I saw uh so I, I was talking to Matthew before this that uh Freddie Boyd it was one of my improv teachers at Dad's Garage and he was posting <laughs> about this thing. I was like, dude, why didn't you tell me that you were doing this? Like obviously this is awesome. <laughs> So yeah, very form fitted, <laughs> but it, it, it looks amazing. Like it doesn't look like a mask. It's crazy. Like, yeah, he's a uh, fully life casted to my head. So we actually, um, in order to do this, I'll show you the process. I actually have it. 
so we did a life cast of me. So here's my bust <laughs> that we used and then uh, sculpted the whole head. Um, I actually, I was, <laughs> Bill made me block it out. So I had to block out the head. So I kind of did the dimensions and then Bill Johnson and Eric Garcia went in and did the final touches. Eric actually did the majority of this thing and then Bill painted it and uh, it's it's fantastic. I mean, Bill loves Jurassic Park, and you can actually see mm -hmm. it's got like Predator or not Predator, uh, Velociraptor kind of coloring, um, which reads really really well on camera. So, but yeah, this is a uh, this is the boss. I actually yeah, I, yeah. I think it is a jaw dropping moment in the fan film of just like <laughs> it, it looks awesome. insanely impressive on camera. Awesome. Yeah, I, I'm I'm really really happy with how it turned out. And yeah, uh, that's. That's the hero shot. <laughs> so yeah. if it if it didn't work, it's like whoops. It's like sorry guys, oh, we hit, we what struck, a, struck yeah. what a letdown. Yeah, yeah. Um, so. And the, the feet are really fun because these uh, these guys are actually designed. I have a shoe inside, so yeah. I put the shoe on, so I can actually walk around in it normally. But uh, again, the claws are designed like Velociraptor, so which is really nice. Mm -hmm. And then the hands. This this was the hardest part because I I kept telling Eric and Bill I'm like I have to be able to hold a gun with this thing and I got to actually like do things so um, this actually has internal foam insets that my hand goes into and I, I wear it like uh, believe it or not I used to uh, cosplay Nightcrawler all the time so I'm used to doing a three finger thing so I do it like three fingers and when I wear it it actually it's very organ like I I can I can feel things so. Hmm. Um, and that's the best part because a lot of a lot of people when they do boss it's very flat and like they can't really do anything where this actually is pretty good i get i get good flexibility here so mm -hmm. yeah yeah a lot of them have the kung fu grip it's just yeah yeah yeah, yeah. 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 The, the toy grip the action figure you know the boss action figure yeah. <laughs> so definitely uh I'm, I'm so happy that i finally got my my favorite character come to life and I, I can't wait to wear this to cons because that's my favorite thing. I love mm -hmm. I love talking a little bit. A lot of attention. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I love just making because I I have nieces and they're they've always been very much into like my characters because I don't like sometimes they don't know it's me. I'll just go and put the costume on, then I'll come out, you know, at a different area, you know, yeah. acting as Nightcrawler or something. My niece is like, Well, it's Nightcrawler, oh my god. So <laughs> I've always I've always been into that. So it's yeah. very fun. Yeah, the kids make the costumes great, you know. Yeah, yeah, really fun. You put on fat. I have that that speaker in my my pouch, and I'll do the voice. I'll talk like this. <laughs> just walk around, and they're, they're like, "Holy crap! He's got a he's got a voice uh, modulator." I'm like, "This is my voice." And they're just like, "Oh my god!" Yeah, the kids flip out. It's great. Yeah. So. Uh, well, I, I want to encourage everyone to go check out Scorekeeper because it is if you if you like Star Wars, which I assume you do if you're on this channel, <laughs> or if you like Predator, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, if, if you like Predator, you're really gonna love this. But uh, I'll link to that in the description and everything, uh, and in the cards. Uh, is there anything else you guys uh, wanted to share or talk about before we wrap up? I, I'd first of all like to thank everyone for taking yeah. the time to watch this, and um, uh, from a fellow nerd to you guys, uh, you know. I hope you enjoy. We we really we honestly made this for you guys. We we just wanted to share in our passion for these characters, and um, I think it's about time Bosk starts getting a little bit of a storyline uh, in Star Wars because I for one was hoping for that. So yeah. we figured we'll just take it upon ourselves to kind of do that. So we'll see. I, I'm I'm yeah. hoping that yeah. the book of Boba Fett book. has some room for. I do. Too. Oh, I yeah. really I think so. Um, I think that'd be awesome. Just bringing him out. Um, I mean he's. It's a little older now, but uh, Trandoshans, they age a little slower than most. So, yeah, we'll see. He's not a baby Yoda. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, he regenerates, so his skin always looks great. He oh, yeah. Right. <laughs> he doesn't shed. You know? Exactly, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> Yeah. do they shed? Hmm. Interesting. Uh, molt? Molt, okay. I, I mean, he I molts. I don't know. Roman, do you know? <laughs> yeah, Roman. Yeah, come on, man. If, if his limb's gone when he grows it out, it'll it'll grow out and then molt off. Yeah, because it's got a, it's like a snake, or okay. or a reptile. Like you know, lizards when they regrow their tails, they have a piece of skin that comes off. That's what, right. in theory, that's what happens. No one's ever seen it, but I'll give you that. Maybe we'll make it. Happen. Maybe we can make yeah. it happen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, but Alex, thank you for having us on. Um, and. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm excited to, to see what everyone thinks and 
uh, hopefully we can make more. That's definitely the plan. So. Yeah. Okay, so uh, here's a question then. Yeah. If you were if you're going to do Scorekeeper 2, will it take place on like Coruscant or Narshadot, like a city planet instead actually, of a uh, uh, actually <laughs> yes. Um the part the two, second, part 2 is written. Yeah, part two, we right. actually have two part 2 and part 3 written already. Yeah. Um but yes, we plan on definitely incorporating some more um uh, higher production value locations. Um which includes stage work, and um, we uh, plan on including some more characters that haven't really been there, seen much. So. Yeah, there, and some originals. So yeah, that, yeah. that we kind of like. It's, yeah, so it's yeah. Uh, we even we're even we even have uh, incorporated uh, some particular droids from video games that haven't <laughs> ever been seen in live action. So uh, uh, which would be yeah. a lot of fun. So yeah, cool. Uh, I, there's a part I'm dying to get to, like to, to film, um, in in three, in part yeah. three, if we can get to that, or or I'm sorry, when we can get to that. Yeah, uh, there's statement. No, there's no if. Statement. It would be cool. So I'll just leave it at yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I hope we get to see parts two and three really soon. Uh, again, there's a link to part one that's out right now in the description. Uh, I'll, I'll link to your your Twitters and everything as well. Put awesome. that up on screen. Thank, uh, you. thank you so much for taking the time to chat with me. Uh, it really, yeah, yeah. I, I, honestly, it was such a fun fan film. I was just smiling like an idiot the whole way through. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> thank you good. so much. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for having us too. Anytime. Yeah. That's pretty awesome. So, so. Uh, thanks again for joining us. Thank you all for hanging out and watching. And may the force be with you. Yes, always, always. <laughs>